This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Dare to enter the movie Dead Zone. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Get My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Well, we're now in what is unofficially known as the dead zone in the movie industry. Mm-hmm. We're past the Oscar nominations, and it's before the end of March. Right. So at, at this point, by mid-January, all those movies that that were released, like in limited release in late December for mm-hmm. Oscar consideration, mm-hmm. have all been out in wide release for a couple weeks now. So what's happening? It's just the... Movies with poor expectations are being dumped. Right. Anything that, that they couldn't fit in somewhere else or that, oops, we have to release this because we made it. Let's put it out now. Or it's been sitting on the shelf for a long time. Right. So are there any worth seeing? <laughs> a few have already opened. Yep. Starting with Mordecai. Right. This was very oddly um, promo. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. We have Johnny Depp as playing this typical Depp character. Yes. Yes. <laughs> very vague yeah it's based on an unknown in the u.s book series right v- v- virtually unknown series of books yeah. it, it's just weird so can depp carry that type of movie well not so much yeah because in its first weekend it got four million dollars the movie cost 60 million to make i just think everybody's pretty much over the johnny depp being weird thing yes yeah you need to find a new hook mm-hmm. the boy next door Jennifer Lopez as a gym teacher? <laughs> That's what I understood. Who accidentally or sleeps with a student yeah. or something like that, and he starts stalking her, and this guy looks like he's 30, and then he's in her high school class? Ah. Well, it got second place in its first weekend, got $15 million, uh, assuming uh, most of that yeah. to, to pay for the movie went to Miss Lopez. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that only cost like $4 million to make. So they're pretty happy with that those numbers. Mm-hmm. Then there was Strange Magic from the mind of George Lucas. Who apparently only had one good idea. <laughs> I, I feel bad for George Lucas. I mean, he has a ton oh, of money, you know, but, Poor George. But really, it's an animated movie. I just I don't understand why you would release it. In the middle of a school month, you yeah. know? Uh. And it made $5 million in its first weekend. Mm-hmm. So that's... Uh, enjoy your time on DVD. Mm-hmm. And then we got a lot of films coming up. Right. Right. Between now and the end of March, just a pile. A pile is, is, is a good way to describe it. Black or White, Kevin Costner and Octavia Spencer. About race relations in America. Well, it's it's he's the grandfather and she's the grand the other grandmother and they're fighting for custody of their grandchild and you know should the white par- grandparent have custody or the black grandparent? It sounds like it should be an Oscar movie, but it must not be because it was released way in too January. early. Yeah, way too early, and it's one of these message movies. Yeah. Uh, there's Project Almanac. It might also be called Welcome to Yesterday. I did a little research. It's one of those two. Wow. Butterfly Effect meets Blair Witch Project. Yeah. It's a time travel movie, found footage movie. I am not going to be watching <laughs> no. that one. Be sure to get the drama mean because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of shaky camera work. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Jupiter Ascending. Independence Day meets Twilight. <laughs> Mila Kunis stars. That's not something you want to hear. Well, I don't know. Some people <laughs> like Mila. Sci- a sci-fi spectacular in February. <laughs> uh. Um, you know, it, it, it yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, the only positive for this movie, the studio plans to show a Batman Superman teaser at, beforehand. So, see the teaser, skip the movie. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Seventh Son, a 3D fantasy based on the book The Lost Apprentice. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently this movie was a victim in a switch of studios. Legendary uh, had it with Warner, and then they moved over to Universal, and this got lost in the shuffle, and now they're dumping this film. Yeah. yeah. SpongeBob, the movie Sponge Out of Water. Yeah. Now, again, animated movie being released in the middle of uh, January. Um, maybe it's not really for kids. Yeah, it must be going for the other other audience, which is, of course, stoners. stoners. 
Uh, it's interesting that it's not yet rated, and it's two mm -hmm. weeks from release as of the, as of this taping. And all the kids are going to want to go see it, but then it's going to end up being you know rated for the stoners instead. Yeah, PG thirteen or something. And speaking of ratings. Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, so the question is, will the women who read this, the, the housewife porn, <laughs> um, show up to see it in public? Yeah, it's R-rated, and based on everything I've heard, if it was faithful to the novel, yeah. it would be lucky to get an NC-17. Indeed, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, I won't be going to see it. I didn't read the book either, though. So I, you know when I knew it was based on Twilight fan fiction, so... <laughs> Perhaps um, it will attract the Twilight crowd as yeah, well. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Kingsman, the Secret Service. Now, Colin, this is one I do want to see. Absolutely. Colin Firth, Michael Caine, uh, Mark Hamill, and Samuel L. Jackson. Mm -hmm. We saw a trailer for this last summer. Yes. And apparently the studio is looking for a spy franchise out of this. Mm -hmm. The movie was delayed. Well, I guess the weekend it was supposed to come out, there were like five other big movies coming out, and mm -hmm. they decided to pull it. This was the earliest they could do it. They think this is counter-programming for Fifty Shades of Grey, same uh, weekend. Ah, okay. Um, as you said, this is the first movie on this list so far we will actually go to see. Yes. We def definitely definitely in, in the theater, see this movie. Right. Then again, there's Hot Tub Time Machine 2. Yes. A sequel in the dead zone. Mm. That's never a good sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Focus. A con job romance. And it's got Will Smith and Margot Robbie in it. And so the only thing that makes this really special to me is they're both going to be in Suicide Squad. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of a preview to see how they'll work together. How they will work together. That will be interesting. <laughs> I really want to see Suicide Squad. Right, yeah. <laughs> Lazarus Effect. About bringing dead patients to life. Basically remaking Flatliners. I was trying to remember the name of that movie. I had to I look was it like, up. That, that's going to be that same movie. <laughs> yeah, it's you the know? same movie, essentially. Yeah. Maps to the Stars, a Cronenberg ensemble thriller. It's a, But it's like not the stars in the sky. It's like Hollywood stars. The Maps to the Stars, yeah, Homes. which you get in Hollywood, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Now, it... One of the uh, the ensemble is Julianne Moore off her probable Oscar win, mm -hmm. like the week after. Yeah, so, so that this could may be actually something. do fairly well. Yeah. Chappie from the maker of District Nine, a robot is kidnapped and brought up in a dysfunctional family. This sounds just weird enough that yeah. I might go see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, this weird, weird concept. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Huh, we have unfinished business. Which is a Vince Vaughn screwball comedy. I, yeah, Meh. I'm not that fond of Vince Vaughn. And again, it, if it was really good, wouldn't it come out in the summer? Yep. Yep. So we have the second best exotic marigold hotel. This is a sequel to right. the first one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it might be good. The first one was okay, but I I, re I imagine that I will end up going to see it not necessarily with you, mm -hmm. but with some of the other older women in my life. Yeah. So, it's an indie. You know, it's, it might actually be good. <laughs> yeah. It was very cute. Yeah. The first one was very cute, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Cinderella. So, Yay! So it had, is from Disney, but it's not animated. Right. Kenneth Branagh, Lily James, Helena Bonham Carter as the fairy godmother. Y you really love Cinderella. Mm -hmm. uh, the trailer I looked at looks very pretty. Mm -hmm. Now, just as an aside, Lily James is um, from Downton Abbey. Mm -hmm. She plays uh, Lady Rose. Okay. And then uh, one of the stepsisters is also from Downton Abbey. Ah. So this makes it also like I, you know, kind of you know, <laughs> nice to pull in the people that you know that aren't necessarily well known, but you like them. So. Right. Divergent Insurgent. Yes. <laughs> the Hunger Games clone. Marches on. Yes. Tweens will go see it whenever it's actually scheduled, yeah. so yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't really, really matter. matter. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to. You don't want it to compete against the Hunger Games, though. Right. So I mean, there's still one more Hunger Games coming out. Yeah. So that's probably why it's now. Serena. This is at the end of March. Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper. So it's like. This movie has apparently been on the shelf for two years. Well, and then that's why they're pulling it out, I guess, because Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper are both on a real upturn, upswing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and have been for a while. So that gives you an idea how bad this movie must be <laughs> for, for big stars like that and have that movie just sitting it's on the it, shelf somewhere. on the shelf. It'll be interesting. Is that, is that a remake of Serena or is that something I else? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, 
I probably won't go see that. And while you're not watching that, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>